of the brain that notices people's faces and can register this person does not look happy with me or this person looks annoyed so I better stay away from that person or that person looks totally happy so when you have uh, disruptions in the right hemisphere of the brain then there's disruption in how that person perceives the visual world around them and especially how they uh, perceive other people and express you know and their emotions their feeling states so they often these uh, often will, disruption in the right hemisphere can cause difficulties with social pragmatics uh, social skills get you know not just not really totally registering what other people are experiencing and in the frontal lobe, which is this lobe right in the front of your brain, this is where reasoning, planning, and emotional regulation take place. This is largely where the executive, what we call the executive functions are. And it's also an important area for speech because one of the major language processing centers is on the front, um, in the left hemisphere toward the front and that's Broca's area, known as Broca's area. It's one of the connections we want to make sure that we activate for good reading. The parietal lobe is where, uh, where we have, <clears throat> again, attention to objects and manipulation, where approximation, oh, there's about so many beans in that jar. Um, and word meaning association, sensory perception, so on. Uh, the occipital lobe, which is right at the back, is actually where our uh, visual cortex is, and <clears throat> that's where we recognize stimuli, things we see, also where letter recognition takes place. And finally, the temporal lobe, which is sort of on the side, uh, is where we categorize, where language comprehension occurs. That's called so-called Warnicke's area. So, um, the, so we have to, which is you know, when, when we look at reading difficulties, we uh, want to make sure that we <clears throat> stimulate and promote and support fast connections between the occipital lobe where letter identification occurs through Warnicke's area where language comprehension occurs and Broca's area which um, is also an area where we pick up sounds. So sounds, comprehension, letter identification, those have to loop really fast for fluent reading to occur. And hence we have all kinds of, um, <clears throat> and the, the sooner we do that in development, the better off the reader is. Now, um, there are also some networks in the brain. Uh, three networks that, based on this, we really, that play into um, why, why universal design has the features of, that it has. One of them is uh, the recognition networks. Now, those are, that's the area, the network in the brain that identify patterns. The brain is a, if nothing, is, a, is, a, is an enormously pattern-seeking organ. And establishing patterns for students and helping students recognize patterns um, is huge for helping them because if, if otherwise if you don't notice a pattern then you have to fit, then you have to just remember something kind of isolated that doesn't you know that isn't very that isn't very helpful that doesn't help you so this is where we recognize voices and faces and letters and words and abstract concepts it's distributed across this, this lobe, these lobes of the brain there, 
and it's very quick and efficient. So, therefore, <clears throat> this is recognition and, and pattern, especially pattern recognition, is a very important part uh, to learning. And then, there are the strategic networks, and those are centered more toward the frontal lobe and in the parietal lobes, um, particularly. And this is where the executive function uh, occurs, which means planning, organizing, um, uh, and uh, execute, monitor, self-regulation, all that, those sorts of things occur in these strategic networks. Um, and we, uh, those, the executive functions are independent of each other, but they operate in a kind of a parallel form, so they are interdependent. And lastly, we have the affective networks, which uh, in the, the oldest part of the brain, evolution in an evolutionary way, is the limbic system. It's where the amygdala is, um, and um, the brain stem, and some other you know areas in the limbic system. That's what attaches emotional significance to objects. That's where fight or flight comes from. That's where uh, when anxiety or fear or sadness occur, the limbic system sends out uh, signals to the uh, to the parts of the brain, especially the uh, strategic network, and it's sort of up to the strategic network to try and modulate that. Uh, so, you know, and sometimes it's successful, and sometimes it isn't. So, therefore, we have kids, you know, who shut down; they can't do things; they're frustrated, etc. So, as educators, we need to deal with that. So, all this basically leads into brain function and learning, which is that every brain is unique. Every single brain is unlike any other brain. So the brain is completely uniquely organized. And, and stop me if you have questions here and so on. Um, and I promise I won't stay long on brains, but still. That, and what happens that we know, too, is that learning causes structural changes in the neural networks. So learning causes, results in massive changes, actually, in the brain. And, um, so, and, that, and similarly, that those changes happen in a sort of a developmental trajectory, depending on brain development, neural network development, um, and so forth. Um, but meaning occurs through recognition of patterns. So an individual sees a pattern or a chain of things or whatever and attaches some meaning to that. Um, and emotions will cause a significant role in patterning. So, learning, in order to learn, there has to be uh, an organization of, of many different things. Um, so we have to organize things in multiple ways. Therefore, we'll organize, for example, let's say, you know, uh, words, reading. Uh, we organize things by meaning, we organize things by sounds, uh, we organize uh, numbers by sequence, by you know other other uh, other patterns that we recognize, and um, <clears throat> and the failure to organize if the mem if memory is constrained, working memory or whatever, or if material is so confusing that the, the that that the brain doesn't recognize the pattern, then there's just confusion and chaos and so on. So learning thus is enhanced by challenge, but completely inhibited by fear or anxiety. So we, um, again, 
need to think about these things. So universal as um, all, so the, the strategic network, the affective network, the um, pattern recognition uh, network, all, um, all work together have, you know, kind of as a team to make learning accessible you know, possible for students. Um, so, universal design for learning and instruction 